This part collab is not about using Gephi. It's pretty much about understanding how can we read digital networks. And it is closely related to what Jacob said in the end of his workshop that relates to a sort of uh, a technical awareness and also technical knowledge regarding uh, digital networks. So um, yeah, so I'm Jana um, and you have this presentation available at this link. I also created a PDF file uh, that gives like some basic guide to work with Gephi. It's not very detailed, but it's good for those who are going to have the first contact with the software, right? Please feel free to talk and to interrupt me any any time you want. So um, before we start, it's important to make clear when I'm speaking of digital networks. So which networks we're talking about? So I very much like this uh, definition of Venturini, Monk, and uh, Matthew. Uh, they see networks as a confusion or a fusion of meanings, right? Because what we're dealing with at the same time, we're dealing with a conceptual metaphor. It is a representation of something that we are somehow extracting from the web environment, which are context in a period of time, a space of connections. But at the same time, computational technique, it is a data set. It is a socio-technical system. And in this sense, we can also think uh, about, no, I don't think we can do that. We can also think digital networks as captured by digital data, but also as platform grammatization, which refers to technological process inherent to the web environment and APIs in which and through which online communication acts action are structured, captured, and, made, and merged in, with other records. And, and this is how we understand uh, these networks, right? And, and then the main question is, right? How to read, how to interpret, how to analyze networks that are afforded by or built upon platforms, web data, and software, because this is the type of the networks we are, we are going to work with during this, this week. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to respond to this whole question, like read, interpret, and analyze, but maybe at the end of the, the week. Uh, yes, I hope so. So to help us with that, what I did was, what we should look at when reading these networks, right? And how can we visually interpret these networks? So let's think of this workshop as a, a sort of like kind of guidelines and references. And that you can see uh, some references again, uh, that you can be helpful later. So what to look at when reading networks? And uh, I think we should start first understanding uh, the place that the network is coming from. So is this network I'm working with uh, afforded by the social media programming interfaces, APIs, or is this network built upon uh, digital data and, so and software affordances? If you think of the example that um, Jacob was dealing with, call links, networks, so web scraping. We are, what we're doing, we are doing the web environment to build a, a network, right? There is a whole process of def the definition from us and also and, uh, the parameters that we choose in the software to build this network. If you went to the, uh, yesterday to the designers practical lab on hashtag image networks, you are building a network, it's not ready-made. So 
sometimes we can use a sort of software that gave us this type of red made uh, uh, files that we you can just use it for instance youtube you use youtube and then you call for a video network a channel network and then the software gives you a a, a gdf file and then you can work on 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 Gephi and analyze your, your data. And, and this is kind of ready-made. So this is important uh, for us to, to understand. And there you see like the example. So on the right side, you see a network that it was built upon a, a bot account. Uh, it was not ready-made by Instagram. We have to build the network. And on the um, left side, you see uh, a network afforded by YouTube. This one is the, the video network of technicity. So, and then we also need to think about the composition and the graph types that help us in understanding what are we reading. That is to say, of course, uh, we all know that the networks the, in, in math language, uh, right, they are graphs and graphs are, uh, a way of organizing data uh, in a certain uh, way, for instance, using nodes and edges. And in this case, we may want to keep in mind that our nodes, they are digital records. They can be a hashtag, they can be a link, they can be an actor, they can be a tweet. And the edges are the, the connections between these records. And depending on the network, depending on how we extract your data, uh, depending how you build your data, these connections uh, will change. So we need to know how they are connected also. Um, and let me pass, oops, no, come back, come back, come back. Yeah, and these, type, these types of connections, just a minute, they can be directed or undirected. Right, so in directed, the edges has a direction. So for instance, someone who uh, comments something in a post, someone who likes some uh, uh, um, um, post and undirected connections uh, have edges that do not have a direction. So the edges indicate two way relationship in that uh, each edge can be transversed in both cases, that that would be the case of co tag networks, because you have correlations, you don't have like direction. And then another thing, very, very important, it is like the, the degree metric, which is using in a network analysis, in social network analysis. And this metric, it's quite simple to understand but you're going to use and need maybe this metric to work with your network uh, when using Gephi. So uh, it tells you how the, num the total number of connections a node has made or has received. So in this example, you see that like company A has degree six. That means the total number of connections within this node is six, but there is a difference, right? The, the node can act, which, uh, which is out degree, has three, and can receive connections. So can make connections or receive connections. So in, this is the difference. Uh, of in degree and out degree. And in the sense of platforms, we can also think, for instance, pages uh, that receive or a person that receive comments or a person that makes comment. And then uh, it is also like this idea of uh, giving or receiving. So, and then we have also the types of graph because in your network you can have different types of nodes or you can have just one type of node for instance what you see there is a co-hashtag network of instagood and this is a monopartite network because you only have 
one type of node. All your nodes are hashtags and they are connected by core occurrences, right? But you can also have a network with two types of nodes. So in, in this case, what you see there, you see uh, this one is like uh, hashtags and images. So you have a node that are images and a node that are hashtags and, and the connections, how the connections happen there when someone used a hashtag in relation to an image. And, and how this is so important for us to understand how connections are made, because uh, in a few minutes, we're going to see that to visualize your network, we need to use a soft um, a layout algorithm, right? And this layout algorithm, one of the, one of the parameters that guides the spatialization of your network, it is connected to, to the degree, to the connections of, of the nodes. So, so far, let me see, are you all with me so far? Yeah, good, great. I'm going too fast. Okay, thank you. Um, let's move on. Okay, now it is the time to some practice. As I said, we are not learning now how to use Gephi. This is the next practical lab. But what we're going to do now, based on this information that I shared with you, is try to identify different types of network, which I have already specialized. I put all the calls in Gephi. I just want you to open the file and then we're going to, to do it together, right? So. Uh, I wanted to ask you to please download this file, open in Gephi, and uh, I'm also going to open my Gephi here. And we're going to, together, try to identify uh, the types of the, the network. Did you manage to, to find the file? Yeah, just to, to remind you, there's the, the link of the presentation is there, so it's easier to click here. Yeah. If, if anybody I can just, sorry, I can just hey, copy and paste the link. I can just copy and paste this link here in the chat. What is the chat? <laughs> oh, okay, here, okay. So yeah, there's the a, link. a more there, yeah. And this is the link. Did you all manage to download it and open in Gephi? Yes, great. Not yet. Everyone? Yes, okay. yes. Nice, so. My Gephi is still opening. So, Okay, I, I can uh, wait. This is my, my, this is the same file that you have there, mm -hmm. right? So this is Gephi. You're going to put uh, your hands and learn how to use Gephi in the next practical lab. But right now, what we're trying to do is try to identify these networks. But and, and in order to do that, let me, quickly tell you that this is the overview, right? It is here that we see our network, here, overview, then data laboratory. And this is very important because we're going to better understand our network, we, we need that. So let's just start with, and as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, different workspaces. Let's start with the first one, right? And uh, which network do you think it is this one? 
just looking at the um, the names. Do you, first, do you think it is a monopartite or bipartite network? Just looking at the nodes. It's a mono. mono. Yeah. Oh no, mono. Good. Do you think the connections are undirected or directed? Uh, directed, directed, because there are little arrows, right? Exactly. Perfect. So, of course, this could be a lot of things. We have Google platforms. We don't know what is that, right? A good way of understanding our network is not only looking at how it looks like, but actually looking at, at the data laboratory and see our data. So what we have that we have the ID, label, in degree, out degree, modularity class. This is what we have here. And then I can tell you that oh, I extracted this data from YouTube. So we're dealing with channels. This is what we have on right now. What else can, can we use to understand this network that we know that is about channels, the direct contact. So let's go back to the overview and understand uh, some things about grammatization. So in this area here, appearance, just click in, uh, so I am here, appearance here partition and click here, choose an attribute. So what, we see, what you see here, it is actually the same information that we have in the data laboratory, right? Okay. And yeah, and that's the same. So let's move to the next. That's, that, that one, it was simple. The next one. What's, Again, okay. Now we have different colors, right? We have different colors. Uh, is it a monopartite or a bipartite network? Bi. Why? Why are you saying that, Jose? Uh, well, there are different colors, but we can edit that, right? Also. Uh, yes. Jose, this is a very good question. You see, the colors of your node is something that you just can add. But uh, usually you can see like the, the type of the node, it is different. This case, don't be confused by the color because you can color your network whenever you want to and how you want to. But the, this network is a video network. It's again a monopartite. So as you see, uh, the, the direct that there is like a direction because there are videos that are uh, related to and suggested by, right? When you watch one video and then you have uh, the, the suggested video uh, related. And when we look at the data laboratory here, see what YouTube provides to you. So see the sort of information it is that everything that you see here, you can use to uh, uh, read your network. So, so you have label, you have the rank, right? You have the channel ID, you have view count. So every activity that one can do on YouTube. So it is like here available grammatized for you. And then you can also play out and understand better here. Again, go to partition, see node attribute. You not only have the degree, but you have also other things. You have other information here, like comment count, dislike, and it is colored by, I don't remember which color I use, but I can color for whatever I want. For instance, for instance, let's think about dislike count and apply, right? Now it is dislike, dislike count. So in, in um, pink, we see, uh, the, so you see the colors sometimes are related to 
platform grammatization, I mean, what YouTube has to offer to you. And sometimes this is related to uh, uh, a measure of uh, degree that, or a measure of social network analysis. And for now, we're just talking about degree. Let's move on uh, again, not to this one. Let's move on to the last one. This that says I tag image net. So what type of network you see in there? How many types of nodes? Now it's you... by, now it's by for sure. It, it's by for sure, exactly. Because you have nodes that are hashtags and you have nodes that are um, images, right? Of course, here you cannot see the image, but you can use uh, image preview or you can use other scripts to plot the images on, on your network. And that is why it is important to understand at the first place how connections are made. We're going to return to this to this Gephi file in a minute. But for now, let, let's move. Let's get back to the to the presentation. Okay, so what we did, we tried to identify based on um, uh, the previous information that I shared with you. Uh, this note is, can be useful, right? Because we usually, when working with networks, we deal with uh, GDF or GEXF file. And what is the difference between this file? So the GDF file, uh, it was, uh, uh, created, originally created to work with this software called uh, GAS, right? It's a graph data set format. And the GEXF file, it was created by the Gephi community. Uh, and I'm going to read that, that I'm better explaining reading these uh, type of files. Created by Gephi community project, as a matter of language for describing complex network structures. What is the main difference between the first one and the second? It is because these use uh, extensible markup language. So uh, that's, that tells the, the, all the difference, right? Because if you, if you don't know, maybe later you can have a look on graph recipes or the minivan project. So this allows one to work with networks on the web environment in an interactive way. Uh, and that is the main difference of, of, the, of these two files. But for instance, if you work with YouTube data tools, you would have the, an, out, an output file with GDF. But again, if you wanted to use as a GEXF file, you can just export in Gephi as this file and, and, and use the network like that, okay? Um, so yeah, I did these questions. So how do you think connections are, are made um, beyond the degree centrality? Yeah. Yes, and I talk a little bit about node sizing, right? The node sizing can, can also be related to a metric that you're using an engagement metric for the platform or a category, a category of the platform. But it is very important that maybe for starting understanding your network, we should start with degree, right? Because this is the base of your network. So how connections are made and degree is going to tell you that. Of course, the other measures, you can size the node in, in other ways, but I would say that we should keep in mind degree as a starting point, right? Now, uh, types of networks and what we read. As we discussed like before, you can have a different types of network, a lot of types of networks, it's a short heap. So, and you can build also uh, different types of networks, networks of following accounts, net core hashtag networks, 
image networks and we can think of uh, hashtag image or post or tweet. I mean, you have um, many options, right, to, to read your networks. But then again, how can we read so different types of, of networks? And then I brought and I created these two tables in a sense to, to, to help us to do that. Because we need to read technical features, which is this table. And we also need to read the network content. And they too, they cannot be separated. So let's say here, we, what we did right now with this exercise in Gephi, it was quite like that. So let's have a quick look on this table. So you see platforms, a column for digital record. So your node or two types of nodes, the graph type, how connections are made, right? And degree centrality. Because again, I'm going to show you uh, uh, today also how this, the network is specialized and uh, how, how connections are made matter. So, and that's why degree centrality is quite important. So let's think of, for instance, usernames or account names because you can have them as a starting point for, for, for building or for analyzing a network. That, that would be a monopartite because it's just one type of node. Um, if it is a following or follower network, it's like a directed connections because one person opt to follow the other one, right? Uh, and then you have here, what would be the degree uh, a username total of followers or followees, what would be an in degree, a username, a username total of followers, what would be out degree, a username total of followings. Uh, thinking of hashtag and, and then again, different platforms, different contexts, different grammatized actions for each platform, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, but hashtags are there. And we can also uh, start networks uh, uh, of hashtags with these platforms. Uh, in this case, I'm not talking about image hashtags. I'm only core hashtags. It is monopartite, just one type, right? And the core currencies of hashtags, so indirect connections. And the, your degree, so you don't have out degree and in degree because it's core currencies. You just have the total. Right, and, and this is, I'm not going to all of the, the table, but this table is, is to give you the sense that what we read, we read technical features, but not separated, uh, right, with techno, technical features. We also read network content, and this cannot be separated. This all should come together. So, and again, we have here a table with like network type, um, platforms, right? Digital records and what we read. So when we, we dealing with hashtag networks and let's maybe think on one hand, you can have monopartite graphs core hashtag analysis, or you can have bipartite graphs, hashtag image or hashtag actor or hashtag text or hashtag link domains. But what we read in that or, or in a sense, we can read associations and non-associations under different frames. At the same time, we are reading also the platform cultures of use related to that hashtag. And uh, we also read in how platform grammatized one actions or a group of people actions, right? And we can also read uh, connections made by similarity, by similar interests, affinities, endorsements. We should also read the absence or lack of connections, what is not there, right? And again, 
we all the time I'm going to read, uh, going to read cultures of use and, and romanticization. So, and this is, was one example I should move on. So this table again is to bring you a sense of to think when I'm reading a digital networks, I, I'm reading the content and the technical features. So move on, how to visually in interpret uh, and read digital networks. Uh, so what we're going to do that, let's think about the shape of the network, right? We understand like what constitutes, how connections are made, the nodes, etc., so on and so forth. Let me ask you if you are all with me. Yeah? Are you all with me? Yeah? So please say something if you want to. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm just keeping the track of yes. the time here. I just have like 10 minutes to close. So let's move on. So the shape of the network. So you see there are different uh, layout algorithms that you can work to, to, to read your network. And, and there you have some examples. If you click uh, on, on the presentation, you can see what this layout, uh, uh, what this graph layout does. And then you have the image source of each one, each of them. Here, we work in especially, uh, I mean, if you're starting with working with networks, uh, we would say that you should start using post directed layouts. Um, and here we're going to use Force Atlas 2. Um, you can find this algorithm here on Gephi. And how this, this um, force director algorithm works uh, based on forces of attraction and repulsion. But there is something very important here because the repulsion forces of force atlas two, uh, it is calculated by degree. So you see, uh, that means or this points us to the origin of our data set and to how connections are made. And that's why quite of important to understand how connections are made. And this algorithm, it works in a way that uh, facilitates uh, the visual interpretation of, of your network and the net, your, net, your network is going to be specialized in a balanced state uh, and help you to better understand and read it. And now let's think of, uh, I think I have to, yeah. Yeah, layers of technical mediation and data relational nature. For this slide, I'm going to say some very fast words, which is of course connected to the process of your query design process until the process of opening your network. So you have a long, all the process, if you look only to this line here down, so you have the platform interface and mechanisms. So you, you have the extraction software, and then you have the network visualization software, and then you use a layout algorithm to um, specialize your network. And then you can play around, of course, uh, degrees and modularity measures, and also uh, information attached to, to your data. This all, this all of this process, we should always keep in mind, right? And it is a process that is not only made and performed by software, but uh, mainly uh, also dependent on our decisions and choices in each step of the process. So I'm going to skip this part because we discussed already and go to visual network analysis, which is a, a technique applied to explore and analyze digital networks with basis on heuristic values and unwritten principles of network spatialization. So this is something that Tommaso Venturini, Matthew Giacomo and colleagues have been doing for more than five years now. So this, the thing is, it is to um, read the network less related to 
uh, statistics and more connected to the visual affordances of the network. So we look at the node position. So we look at um, the zones of the network, what is in the center, what is in the mid zone of the network, and what is in the peripheral zone of the network. We look at uh, density of nodes and its variation. So we look at clusters, of course. We look at bridging nodes and peripheral zones and node size and node color. But we all know until now, now, of course, we all know and understand that node size and node colors are closely related to our decisions, but also uh, from the environment your network is coming. So how, how, how connections are made. And, uh, and then this is, 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 a, is an interesting form of analyzing the networks, thinking about uh, the zones of your network, especially because the first Atlas II spatialization help us in this sort of uh, interpretation and what is in the center because the, the node in the center, usually you would see nodes that have a variety of connections. And sometimes they can be the most popular ones, but on the other times they just are in the center because they got a, a very varied con uh, sorts of connections. The zones that are very, very interest, interesting to analyze is definitely the periphery zone of your network because there um, you will see a very particular, a very particular uh, point of view and a very particular perspective on your subject, subject of study. Um, let me see here. Yeah, we have like, um, yeah, five minutes. And what comes next is just questions uh, to keep in mind in the process of an analyzing your network. I'm not going to, to bring up the details, but I think the questions can help somehow, right? So what to consider in the analytical process? So what network zones need to be analyzed and why, right? Because uh, sometimes we don't have to, to do everything. What paths need to be emphasized and why, right? Sometimes you, you detect a very interesting path. So from the center to the periphery zones or um, between peri periphery zones. Um, what is visible? but irrelevant, right? And this is, is important to note for BISA follow, following network of institutional, uh, you, uh, of faculties here, of NOVA faculties. And in the periphery, you see a very big nodes. You see very big nodes like NOVA Desporto, NOVA FCSH, but they are just big because they connect and they follow a lot of people. And if we are here, for instance, interested in studying institutional connections and, and or this sort of perspective. Maybe we don't want to, to look at the big nodes, but, but to the center and to what bridges one institution to another. So what is visible but irrelevant. And what is hidden but important. Right, and this is again, so how tricky can be using uh, engagement metrics in applying engagement met metrics in the nodes before understanding your, your whole context of your network and how connections are made. Because what you see there is like the nodes sized by degree, right? And, uh, and these are institutional pages and the connections are made because one page like another page or, or, or can like or can receive a like. And in this sense, one can be tricked and think about uh, in terms of 
in terms of um, generate, generating a debate on, on Facebook at the time, it was that page who has this huge impact of people talking about, it was a Facebook um, metric. So again, important to understand the context. So what is hidden but important? And what needs to be described and highlighted, right? You see that the same network in the both cases. One have colors based on clusters and the other one has colors based on findings. So the most important thing here in these networks was trying to detect the um, misuse or disinterpretation of uh, this hashtag. So, and this is why they decided to highlight the yellow uh, part. So, and to do that, we need to first uh, interpret and analyze the full network. And to end, to close this very, I'm in a hurry, I have one minute, is like uh, the research intervention. Uh, and I think this is very, big, this is something like clear in my talk. Uh, we do have a, a, a very important role starting from designing your query, right, to all, the, all your choices along the way with your network. And then, of course, in the navigational procedure that one takes to analyze the network and how you do that. So you not only use Gephi, like overview and data laboratory, but you use that information to navigate to, to, to the web and then you use your spreadsheet and then you can visualize in a big screen. So there is here a, a navigational procedure uh, important that guides um, the process of reading networks. So this is what we did in these 45 minutes, um, a challenge. So what to look at when reading, the, uh, when reading networks. So the situation in which the network comes from, the graphical representation in relation to platform data and mechanisms, um, and how, do, how we visualize uh, and interpret visually the networks, right? We need to think about the shape of the network and the technical mediation, visual network analysis, and our own intervention. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you very much. Bye.